Oh, good afternoon. This is Dr. Rosemary Tasman again. Uh, I'm lecturing for product development, continuing on concept testing at chapter 7. So here in the uh, textbook, they presented a new product, uh, namely uh, EM Power Electric Scooter. So these, uh, these are the product, uh, how it looks like. So the chapter will discuss on the electric uh, scooter after this. So basically, uh, Empower Corporation is a, a new company in the US. Uh, back in 1980s, uh, they developed this kind of electric scooter for uh, short distance uh, people to travel. For example, from the parking uh, car lot to the office. So that is their targeted uh, customer. And the product in such a way, it can be folded, uh, put at the back of the car for uh, moving, uh, for traveling around. So when it is being used, it is just something like this. People just step on it and they can uh, move. And it is electrically powered, which is powered by battery. So Empower Corporation basically uh, designed this uh, electric uh, scooter with uh, three wheels. So it means that uh, front one wheel and at the back two wheels. And they have done with the testing of the concept. And they are testing uh, the concept uh, with a few number of approaches. So they must decide what of the what kind of testing uh, concept they must uh, pursue to uh, proceed uh, with the project. So <clears throat> if this is what uh, electric scooter looks like back uh, perhaps in 1980s in which uh, it is uh, basically a single frame with a bar uh, handle to hold your hands here and some kind of uh, flat uh, platform here for people to step in uh, in this uh, th there are some type with uh, two wheels there are another type with three wheels but m corporation electric scooter uh, is the one with the three wheels Normally, the target of this concept is for those that not wanting to walk uh, within, you know, 100 meter or 500 meter or one kilometer. So they tend to uh, find that this electric scooter is very helpful. And this device concept is based on a uh, small uh, design. It should be uh, small enough to fit in uh, at the back of your car or to fit into to bring in into train or to bring into your office and park it uh, somewhere uh, next to your office. So it is powered by battery. It's supposed to be not that expensive. Uh, perhaps this kind of uh, scooter uh, at the range of uh, 500 uh, to uh, 800 ringgit should be considered uh, affordable. Uh, easy to keep or easy to put it somewhere for parking. Uh, should be kind of long lasting and quite tough in terms of design and easy for recharging. So these are the basic few main uh, concept that is in the mind of the designers. So this is what we are uh, discussing about the electric scooter. Well, back in 1980s, I think the book discussed on uh, this kind of old uh, type design of electric scooter like the, this and power. But uh, since then, electric scooter has transformed itself into a more user-friendly and easy to handle uh, device. And it has been known as a Segway, for example, uh, this device. This device perhaps very popular uh, in the 90s, in which uh, it also include movie, Hollywood movie, as far as used by the security in the park, uh, in the shopping mall. However, in this new millennium in the year, uh, year 2000, people are moving on into a more simplified, uh, compact and easy to bring around kind of electric scooter in the name of uh, hoverboard. So nowadays, people, uh, uh, athletes, uh, people who are active in the outdoor activities, normally they prefer to buy hoverboard instead of Segway. Segway is the more uh, applicable in the uh, more formal setting like uh, airport security, uh, police uh, forces and those kind of uh, those that are monitoring public 
and need to move around so they perhaps prefer segway because it is more formal in which uh, on the other hand uh, electric uh, scooter like this is more like for teenagers so nowadays it is already year uh, new millennium uh, year 2020 or 2019 people are moving uh, further uh, to the new type of uh, transporting device they call it uh, it's quite similar to segway but it is more miniaturized mini so this device is called nine bot segway this is the latest product which is equivalent to the empower electric scooter which is discussed in the textbook and i would like to focus my lecture based on latest device uh, available in the market instead of those discussed in the textbook like uh, M power electric scooter. Let's have a look how uh, does the nine bot uh, Segway look like and how it is operating. This is the nine bot mini, a self balancing two wheeled hands free electric scooter or hoverboard with some really sweet specs and features and possibly one of my new favorite rideables. Stay tuned to find out. I'm Ben from Authentech and those old school balance boards are out. The 9Bot Mini is part of the new wave of hoverboard technology. Right off the bat, the 9Bot feels and looks extremely well built. And before any of you start thinking, oh, it's going to catch fire like the others, this ain't like the others. Xiaomi, that worldwide tech company valued around $40 billion, invested $80 million into 9Bot, and 9Bot bought Segway. These are legit companies with legitimate products, not cheap knockoffs. Moving on. The Ninebot comes with that fresh new car smell and a ton of little details that I really appreciate, like the easy open flap for the battery plug, plus another rubber seal on the inside. The padded foam on the middle leg bar is plush and soft and high quality. The 10 inch tires are large and durable with plenty of tread. There's dual headlights in the front, plus two pulsating color LED strips in the rear. There's a glanceable LED indicators up front to show battery life, Bluetooth status, lock status. The main specs include a max speed limit about 10 miles per hour. It can go up to 13 and a half miles on a single charge. It's portable and easy to carry, weighing 28 pounds and fits easily in the trunk of your car. First time jumping on it, super easy, especially if you're familiar with any self-balancing scooter. Possibly even easier than the original hoverboards because the leaning of your body weight only affects forward and backward movement. To turn left or right is all controlled by subtle nudges of the middle control rod with your legs or knees. When you first turn it on, you're locked into beginner mode, which limits max speed. But that's actually a nice feature to force beginners to learn and get the hang of it. To unlock all the features, you'll need to download the app, Android or iPhone, connect via Bluetooth, and then you're guided through a step-by-step -step tutorial. Once you've completed that introduction tutorial as a final step, the app requires you to travel one kilometer before it unlocks full speed. From the app, you can control and view a whole assortment of cool details. It shows your current riding speed, mileage, distance remaining, in-depth battery info, and you can even calibrate the sensors and tweak a whole load of other settings. You can set certain speed limits, say you're letting your new friend jump on and don't want them to injure the nightbot. You can also fully customize the light settings change different animation modes like breathing or rainbow. Really cool. Another really nice feature is that it detects when there's a new firmware version for the scooter and it'll auto update over the air for you. Now the performance of the 9Bot Mini is impeccable. Very fast, zippy, and reactive. The smallest weight transfer forward or backward, it responds instantly. If you need slow and precise movements, which for example are perfect for steady cam control, it can do that or if you need fast moves, it responds without a hiccup. The ride is extremely smooth and silent. With the large 10 inch tires, it glides effortlessly over the ground. And you can barely feel the sidewalk bumps and cracks and flying up and down hills off-roading, no problem. Feels durable, strong, and powerful. One of my favorite features, you can remote control the mini Segway from the app. Perfect for those times you wanna look like a total bad egg and magically summon your scooter to your side, jump on, and then ride off. Now this will turn heads. Another great bonus that's a lot bigger deal than it sounds, when you lift up the scooter while it's powered on, it auto disables the motor, so it doesn't start spinning the tires like other scooters. Then when you place it back down on the ground, it auto engages and stands upright. Another related feature, 
If or when you fall off, it won't topple over like the old ones used to and get all scratched up. This will stay upright the entire time while powered on. I went for a quick ride down to a local juice shop about a mile and a half away. Google Maps said it'd take about 35 minutes if I walked there, 15 minutes if I biked there, and when I rode my 9 bot, it took only 12 minutes. And no, I wasn't flying at max speed, I casually took my time. In terms of usability and quality, you can just feel that it's a huge step up from the old hoverboards. So any negatives? Well, I guess the only feature I wish it had would be the option to steer in two different ways. One with the as-is rod control, but sometimes I feel like I'm crouching just a tad too much to steer left and right. So it'd be really cool if I could flip a switch in the app and steer with the foot pads only. That way I can stand up straight the whole time. However, I admit that after a few days of riding around, it becomes a very natural motion. As you lean into the turns, your legs naturally press against that rod to steer in that direction. Overall, performance and features of the 9Bot Mini are so cool. I definitely rank this as one of my favorite scooters. Current price is around $600, but that's always fluctuating. So be sure to check out the links below for current pricing and more info. Huge thanks to Southfields for sending me the unit to review. And huge thanks to you guys for watching and hitting that thumbs up button. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for more videos on scooters like these. And leave me a comment on how you would use the 9Bot Mini in your world. And until next time, let's live the authentic life. Okay, very well. You have seen the latest electric scooter in the market uh, in the form of uh, Nine Bot Segway instead of the M uh, Corporation electric scooter. So say you are tasked with uh, proving the concept. So you need to test uh, the concept how it is well received or non well received by the potential customer. So at this stage, you need to do some form of activity in order to test the concept uh, whether uh, it is good for customer. So what you need to do is that basically to prove the product concept. So you need to get the data <coughs> basically from the potential customer. So who do you think that would be most likely interested to buy this kind of uh, uh, transporting device? So since it seems like uh, very sporty, it is agile, so it could be possibly uh, uh, people uh, as uh, teenagers and who are most likely active in sports, uh, active in doing, for example, physical activity in the park. So you have to target uh, who is the potential customer for this kind of uh, product. So in such a way, you can uh, really uh, <clears throat> follow the acceptance of the product of your this kind of prototype. So after that, uh, you will have to somehow estimate uh, how many uh, nine bot Segway can be sold for that kind of targeted segment of people of your customer. So and then you can do some simple economic analysis of the product whether it is uh, can hit best selling in the market or not. So next is uh, <clears throat> the seven step in order to prove uh, the concept of your newly developed product. Well, first you need to define the purpose of the test, uh, define the survey population who you want to uh, focus on. And then uh, we have to uh, choose what is the most suitable format to gather the uh, data for concept testing. And we have to communicate effectively on the new product concept to the potential customer. So then we have to measure in terms of customer response, in terms of uh, some calculation, interpret the result and do some kind of reflection on the whole process of concept testing. Next, first, uh, we have to define the purpose of the concept. Okay, for example, this uh, <coughs> nine bot segue so which several alternative concepts uh, should be pursued you know what are concept which is suitable uh, which concept are less suitable so for example nowadays it is more towards uh, internet marketing internet uh, kind of approach so we have to choose uh, which concept is uh, nowadays available and some more uh, 
uh, internet-based kind of marketing is nowadays the preferred method uh, chosen by teenagers because they are more comfortable to uh, see the product uh, via handphones or uh telephone website so these are very much the concept that is available to choose from so how can the concept be improved to meet the customer needs so this one we have to listen to the feedback to the, to the, from the customer and from there you can make the adjustment as far as promotion approaches how to explain the product and the concept uh, to the uh, potential user so there we have to estimate how many product can be sold into the targeted group of customer. For example, the athletic youngsters in your neighborhood or in your university or in your community. So by that feedback, we can have a by better feelings or better gauge whether the uh, subsequent uh, development uh, project or the next model uh, should be continued or not. So this will define the first step of the uh, concept tests. Second step is uh, we need to choose who to survey from. As I explained it earlier, uh, nine bot Segway uh, transporting device is more highly likely suitable for teenagers, right? Uh, instead of like uh, senior people or instead of uh, 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 people working in the offices, I think. Uh, this kind of uh, device because it is uh, quite expensive in malaysia uh, it will cost somewhere around uh, rm 2000 so we have to carefully choose who we are targeting uh, the most possible uh, customer to buy this nine uh, nine bot segway right so in my opinion we could focus the survey population uh, based on perhaps uh, sports community club for example, uh, there are sports club uh, in your community uh, that is uh, focusing on, more on uh, sporting events in the park or in the recreational activity. So that could be a good option uh, to focus on to make the survey. Mostly we are targeting the youngsters with uh, outdoor activity tendency uh, that uh, they prefer to do. So that is one possible survey population to focus on, which is the teenagers group. And uh, what, uh, what to choose it from is basically uh, there are a few approaches, whether you want to focus on a smaller sample size, perhaps uh, the size of 50 or 100, or you could uh, test it on the larger sample size, perhaps uh, 800 or 1,000 uh, uh, number of population. So again, uh, the surveying approaches is uh, slightly different because on the smaller size, uh, survey potential customer is uh, relatively uh, costly in terms of uh, it takes time and it uh, costs a lot of money because it is a smaller survey. But if you survey based on uh, customer with a larger sample size, this uh, could be done uh, in a mass approach manner, then perhaps by internet approach, we can do it fast and the cost uh, per individual survey is uh, slightly less expensive. <clears throat> Step three is that uh, we, uh, we need to decide uh, as far as choosing the su suitable survey format. Survey format in the form of uh, method to execute the survey, for example, is it a one-to-one -one interview? So is it by phone or through telemarketing? Or is it by postal mail or is it by electronic mail or it is through internet? But I think uh, one survey format which is uh, for, uh, famous nowadays is uh, through uh, perhaps the internet-based uh, uh, method. Uh, for example, uh, advertising uh, through the internet website or perhaps by using electric mail or social media platform like uh, WhatsApp. Uh, we can uh, consider also using uh, Google Forms, uh, surveying the teenagers because most uh, teenagers nowadays, they do have uh, phones and smartphones. So it is much easier to focus on uh, social media platform, email, 
or internet means of communication uh, to the survey to the population. Now, the fourth step to communicate the concept, how, how do you want to promote this uh, nine bot segue? Uh, well, you have uh, to have a verbal description or you need to sketch it, but all these uh, means uh, perhaps are quite uh, obsolete, but nowadays people would like to uh, have it promoted using video or short video clip that would be very good or interactive multimedia uh, on top of showing the actual working prototype. So I think uh, communicate the concept through video uh, or interactive multimedia, uh, for example, so social media platform and showing the actual prototype would be good to communicate uh, the, your new product concept like that uh, nine bot uh, segue to your potential customer focusing on uh, teenagers' uh, uh, segment. And here is uh, you are <clears throat> evaluating uh, which uh, method are uh, suitable to communicate your concept. For example, telephone, electronic, electronic mail, uh, physical post, mail, internet or face-to-face. -face. So here is uh, part your, of your estimation. So perhaps face-to-face, -face, uh, you have the opportunity to show the actual product, have them uh, try it, have them touch it, have them feeling the product. Uh, internet is uh, quite a good media because nowadays uh, most teenagers got uh, a smartphone in order to uh, learn about the new uh, product or the new concept. And then after the survey, you have to measure the customer response in the form of a numerical number. Say you provide... Uh, this kind of survey in the form, so Likert scale 1 to 5, right? And you ask them, uh, are they mostly willing to buy the, the product? So some of them might say they would, some of them say definitely would not buy. So from this number, you could uh, sum up what is the total score that you got out of uh, so many uh, people you have done uh, the survey from. And if you refer to the textbook at page 179, uh, the concept of a uh, test survey. So you could ask, what is the segment? Are you a college student? Uh, do you live between one or three miles from the campus? So basically, I would say student would be uh, teenagers and student would be quite a good target for your survey population. And you can ask them uh, the, with a certain product uh, feature if the pricing is around RM, say 2000, are you willing or not willing to buy? So they will choose whether it is too expensive or they would say, well, I would definitely uh, buy the product because it is uh, convenient and good uh, for my uh, walking uh, to the class campus, for example. And among the few step, uh, few uh, last step is step six. We need to interpret the results, right? So how to interpret the result from the survey uh, by using a uh, few approaches, either by direct, mar uh, direct marketing or direct talking face-to-face, -face, or uh, you need to focus on the good pricing, or you need to offer some promotion. So we have to estimate uh, ultimately how, how many uh, product that you can sell. For example, uh, in uh, your community, uh, there are sports clubs uh, with, say, 1,000 members. Uh, this uh, sports club, I would say probably uh, skateboard, uh, skateboard club or perhaps a teenagers club that are uh, active in outdoor activity. So how, how, how to estimate how many uh, people that would uh, mostly willing to buy? So say... Uh, you have a, a teenagers club members say around 1000 so you need to promote uh, the product for them to buy so how much quantity uh, that they are mostly willing to buy you could estimate in this way q equal to n which is number of customer around 1000 uh, multiply by a uh, a means uh, availability and awareness now how many percent of them are uh, aware the existence of the product and multiply by the probability of the product uh, that normally uh, around uh, 20%. So by having that, you could estimate 
how much uh, quantity that the nine bot segue will be sold. For example, by calculating out this formula, say n equal to 1000. So 1000, then uh, multiply by awareness. Awareness is normally, if you have done promotion it right, I would say one third of the total community of 1000 would buy it. So that means 30%, which is multiplied by 0 0.3 right and multiply by the probability uh, level that how uh, how are the chances how many of them uh, are willing to buy i would say probability is normally around uh, 20 percent so that's 0 0.2 right and by that simple estimation you can target that at least estimate that around uh, 60 people uh, are willing uh, to buy your uh, nine uh, nine bot segue. So that is a quick uh, estimation of a quantity how much you can sell, which is the number of the community that you are targeting on multiply by about one third of uh, the population, then multiply by probability about one quarter or twenty percent of the probability of the number of people will buy. So you have uh, this kind of estimation about sixty. Uh, nine bot segue uh, can be sold for that kind of targeted community. So that is the uh, targeted calculation. And uh, the last step is uh, step seven. Well, after you have done all the promotional item, the video, uh, have the survey and the estimation of quantity to sell. So you could do a uh, quick reflection on the result that how you could achieve your target uh for testing the concept i mean we are estimating for that uh, teenagers uh spot community club around 60 people out of 1000 are willing to buy so from there you could estimate that uh, that uh, the inventory level around uh, 60 or 70 uh, of the nine uh, nine bot segway can be stocked up for the purchase so that is how to prove uh, the concept so reflection on the result. So basically, uh, you need to understand on the overall size uh, of the market, which is N, right? So then uh, on the availability, normally it is around uh, one third, around 30%. Fraction of uh, the customer that were likely to purchase, normally the probability around 20%. So as such, Q equal to N multiplied by A multiplied by B is the... A simple formula that you can estimate that this much or uh, this how many people that willing to buy your new product for your uh, new concept prior you are moving towards uh, mass production or second stage production after you produce the first prototype so <clears throat> that is basically my explanation on chapter three uh, concept testing uh, when you come up with a new product how to better approach it in order to sell to your customer by that i would say uh, thank you for your attention in this chapter on product development costs so by that uh, i stop here and thank you